welcome to the channel. Today we'll be specifically looking at Drag and Drop, which has just been released in the March 2024 beta of Home Assistant and is scheduled to be released to everyone on Wednesday the 6th of March, as with all new versions which are released on the first Wednesday of every month. Now before you all run off and join the beta program, a word of caution. I would always suggest having a full backup before installing beta versions. Watch the video in the pop-up above on how to do this and to install a permanent solution for all your backup needs. To join the Home Assistant Beta program, you'll need to navigate to Settings, System, Updates. In the top right hand corner, you'll see three dots. Press this, join the beta program, read the warning, and if okay, press join. Now is a good time to restart your Home Assistant so you pick up on all of those new updates. Go to Developer Tools, check your configuration, Press restart, confirm restart, and again. Once restarted, you should see a notification that a new version has become available, and you can upgrade to it. This is listed as Home Assistant Core 2024.3.0b5. Select this. Leave the Create Backup Before Updating ticked if you have not deployed a permanent solution and followed the video from before. Press Install. Now let's make sure that the beta version has loaded. Go to Settings. Go to About. You'll now see that the core is running on 2024.3.0b5 and the update has been successful. Now, as this is a beta version, there might be some issues. What you see in this video might not be the same as the final version that comes out on the 6th. In this version, you can now create sections and perform drag and drop of tiles between those sections. You can't do headers and sidebars in this version, but the developers have confirmed that this will be in future versions. Now, if you are testing this out, I'd suggest creating a new dashboard for this purpose. Navigate to Settings, Dashboards. Press Add Dashboard in the bottom right hand corner. Select New Dashboard from scratch and give it a name. You do not need to change any of the other defaults and press Create. Now navigate to the dashboard you just created. Now press the pencil in the top right hand corner. Now, although the home dashboard is shown, this is a placeholder and effectively doesn't have a dashboard type. So we can still change this. Once you have created and populated a dashboard, you cannot change it. Well, at least not in this version. Press the pencil next to the home. Scroll down to view type. We're going to be selecting sections experimental and press save. You'll be presented with a single unnamed section. For this demonstration, we'll have a user case of creating a simple dashboard with two sections, one for lounge and one for outside. Press the pencil on the top of the unnamed section and give it a name and press add. Now we need to add another section. Press the icon with the three boxes and the plus to the right of your section. Repeat the action. Press the pencil, give it a name, and press add. Even at this stage, we can still move sections around using the four directional arrows. Now let's add some cards and entities. Press the plus sign in the section you wish to add to. Select entities. Add a filter if required to find the appropriate entities. Tick the entities that you require to be displayed and press the continue button. Home Assistant will come back with a suggestion for the cards that could be used. If you're happy with these card selections, then press add to dashboard. The entities are added to the dashboard using the card you selected. You can now move the entities around the dashboard, but instead of having to press the move icon as you did in the previous section, you can now just simply drag and drop them. You can also edit the card for the entity by using the pencil within the card. And finally, you can also duplicate, copy, cut and or delete the card using the three dots in the top right hand corner. This makes it super simple to manipulate your cards. Now let's add some entities to the outside section. Press the plus symbol in the outside section. Select by entity. Filter as required. In this example, I'm selecting two different entities, one for the fridge current and one for the pool current. If I now press the continue button, Home Assistant will come back with a suggestion for cards. This is the point where I can pick a different card if required. If I now select pick different card and I wish to place these onto a sensor so that I have a graph for the current. Now if I select, it will bring back a preview. I can now press save. Notice that if you pick a different card for multiple sensors, then only one of the entities is actually displayed. If you now wish to add the second entity, you have to perform the same exercise again, picking that entity specifically. Now we have already demonstrated moving cards within a section, but you can also move cards between sections, picking up on the fridge current graph, moving it across into the lounge and moving it back. Now in my testing, this has worked for all Lovelace cards.
and I don't seem to have any problems with the hex cards either. Now let's try adding an alarm panel. Press the plus symbol inside of the appropriate section. Search for and select alarm panel. Press save. Now let's test to see if we can move it. The card is rendered correctly and can be moved. And finally, let's try a mushroom card. Press the plus icon in the section you wish to add to. Select the mushroom vacuum card. Select the appropriate commands and press save. Now let's see if we can move the card. The card is able to be moved and renders correctly. One last point that I think will make this dashboard view very attractive to you all. Have you ever had a dashboard and try to view this in a window and shrinking the horizontal view, you find that the cards jump all over the place. If you look at the demonstration dashboard I have on the outside, shrinking the horizontal view shows the pool tile jumps to what might seem to be an illogical place. There is a good reason for where it jumps to, and yes, there are always ways to prevent this. But as you can see, the pool tile starts on the top right hand corner and then jumps to the first column instead of jumping to the bottom of the second column. But now in this new dashboard using sections, firstly, the sections will contract. Then the section to the right will jump underneath the section to the left. Then the sidebar will minimize. This makes for a far more logical and easier to control approach as into where sections will move to. Neat and simple and easy to understand. So that's a super quick demonstration of drag and drop, the killer new feature that is currently in 2024.3 beta version and scheduled to drop on Wednesday the 6th of February. Super flexible, super easy, well thought out, planned and executed. I'm sure there will be much more to come on this topic. So subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of when the full dashboard creation using drag and drop becomes available. Until the next one, enjoy rebuilding all your dashboards.